Now, when I look at this page, I feel like I'm nine grams deep into some magic mushrooms. The sexual nature has me questioning the potential monetization of this video, and it will probably visit me in my nightmares tonight. But I can stare at it forever. It's like a train wreck, you know? I might get something here tattooed on my own body. It seems really interesting and gross and disgusting, and I love it. My name is Sylvia from Sylvia Ray and you're watching my channel. Now I realized something specific that will always pique my interest and that's the idea of bizarreness. And today we'll be diving into Instagram artists who explore this idea. According to Merriam-Webster, the definition of bizarre is something strikingly out of the ordinary. Something that's odd, extravagant, or eccentric in style or mode. When people are straying away from the constructs of what society deems as normal, we get a lot of mixed reactions. There are people who feel a guttural cringe that sends shivers down their spine. People who accept, embrace, and surround themselves with such eccentrism. And lastly, people who rebuke such abominations in the name of their Lord and Savior. But this idea is subjective to the individual consuming such abnormalities. A perfect example of these reactionary masses in pop culture is Doja Cat. At the start of her career, I like to believe that she actually enjoyed doing what she was doing, making music, dancing, performing, making memes, being herself. But at some point, it seems like the pressure of being something outside of herself was too much. People looked up to this idea of her being a pop artist and what that meant for how she was being perceived as a person. Perhaps on top of whatever other controversies she had faced during this time. She thoroughly disliked being placed on this false pedestal of what her fans expected of her. So she rejected it. Doja Cat almost became her own polar opposite and many people rejected her back. I used to like your music, but you treat your fans like shit. Dude, literally suck. You act like I have some responsibility to be like babying people and treating people like stupid, but they're not stupid. That's why I yell at them. Somebody coming in here being like, you're ugly as when you're bald. That's my fan? You're so misguided. You act like I'm saying My fans are, it's like you're hearing me say that out of my mouth when I never did. There's a lot of people I don't like who I fucking listen to their music. If I knew them, I probably wouldn't fucking like them. I'm not your friend. I make fucking music and you like it. And if you don't, cool, great, I don't give a I'm not doing it so that you like me. I'm doing it because it's fun. I love my fans. I wouldn't have this painting in front of me if it wasn't for my fans. I wouldn't have food on my table. I wouldn't have my house if it wasn't for my fans. I would have a home, but I wouldn't have this house probably. But I'm not giving them all the credit because I do work my ass off. So. The image that she had reinvented for herself alludes to the bigger picture of how we perceive change in eccentricity. Too many people expect other people to be confined into what they deem as normal but refuse to admire the art and the oddities. The weird people, like, like us. <laughs> I'm here to embrace it. Now this is the page of the artist Anna Udenberg. At first glance, her art feels illegal to look at. The sexual nature has me questioning the potential monetization of this video. Not only is it bizarre to look at, it sort of turns me on. Upon looking into this artist's art some more, I've discovered that this piece specifically alludes to uh, relinquishing autonomy through consumerism and passive submission. But if you ask me, if that's me for breakfast, you're not done eating until I say so. <laughs> now, when I look at this page, I feel like I'm nine grams deep into some magic mushrooms, hiding in a dark basement, begging for the ghosts of my ancestors to come and help me. This creator uses stable diffusion to create his art. If you don't know what that is, it's a generative AI model 
that uses advanced algorithms to create highly realistic images. You can run this on your computer without the internet and instead of web surfing, you can kind of put your own data set into it and it'll generate whatever image is based off that. So it's a little bit more ethical in my opinion because you're not using, hopefully, other people's art without their permission. This person has a hyper-realistic, very abnormal, grotesque theme going on in their page. Their art has extravagant detail inside intricate patterns that make for a piece that you can stare into forever. This piece in particular though makes my brain hurt and it will probably visit me in my nightmares tonight. And oh God, is it scary. I kind of want to learn how to do this, if I'm being honest with you. It seems really interesting and gross and disgusting and I love it. This piece I want to say is actually pretty cute, especially when you compare it to some of the other pieces on this artist's page. I don't know if it's the bee toys themselves or the playful movement of the orange aquarium plants falling off of the sides, but I like it a lot. Something about it feels uplifting and nostalgic. David Henry claims that his work is heavily influenced by AI. So you can kind of see that in the duplicating elements morphing into each other. And he mostly puts himself in the piece and I think that's interesting. A lot of it appears to be kind of suffocating if you think about it. Having just had a lot of shit around your head and painting your face, it just seems like it's uncomfortable but it makes for a great piece of art that looks weird and it's almost estranged from reality and it's different, bizarre, awesome. Now for Philip Kramer, compared to the rest of the works on this page, this one is particularly mild, tame, okay? It's weird and it's beautiful, you know? You've got what seems to be a lovely couple and a picture seat painting masked over this woman's face and what seems to be her hands aggressively caressing what appears to be a swollen knee on his face instead of the features that are actually supposed to be there. You know, like eyes, a nose, a mouth. There's not even any facial hair, it's just bare and bald. He's bald. His page kind of looks like if artificial intelligence looks like it had too much to drink. It's mostly portraits whose features are astronomically exaggerated or non-existent at all. They're hyper-realistic Picasso's. And I would say it's pretty non-elegant. It's very strange, very weird. Honestly, and it's uncomfortable to look at. But I can stare at it forever. It's like a train wreck, you know? It's ingenious. Now this piece is what I imagine a headache looks like. I believe this artist is based in South Korea. Her art, though it's bizarre, it has an elegant and beautiful nature to them. There's a mesh between femininity and nature. There is a refined fierceness to the woman that she draws up. I really enjoy her style. It just feels so tasteful. I might get something here tattooed on my own body. I want to be the woman that she's drawing. I want to be them. All in all, I believe art is art, whether it's bizarre or not. And that goes the same for people. Perhaps all of these masterpieces reflect the uniqueness of the artist's minds. We're all different in our own ways. I know I've struggled with embracing my full personality for a long time. Just because people always said that was kind of a lot or weird or made fun of me or pushed me to the side, shrugged me off, so to speak. Being judged comes with the territory. But when you are different like that, over time you learn not to take it so personally. Just be you. Just put yourself out there. No matter how much of a weirdo you are, your people will find you. And when you create something that you can put yourself into, it's rewarding. And no matter what, beautiful. And that's the beauty of the human experience. The best thing we can do is extend some compassion and learn from each other. I would like to thank you for watching me and
and I hope you have all the blessings that you deserve.